How much do you hate me? On a scale of one, two, don't look at me. I'm flushed. Oh, why do I always have... Guys, the covers are still on the chairs. The rank old duvet or curtains or whatever they are. Covers, they're still there, I apologise, I hate them. Uh, can we hear that? Evie was spayed this morning and now she's back and she won't stop crying. I don't know what to do. Like, I know it's fine. The vet said like, oh, hold on, the light. Oh, she's giving me the eagles. She's under the table. She's really not happy with me. Evie, I'm sorry. It's for your own good. If she comes out, I'll show you her or I'll just show you her under the, the sofa. But um, yeah, the vet just said she's just crying because she's obviously like confused and obviously it's uncomfortable, but they've given her pain relief. So she's not actually in any pain. They even like showed me the wound and they just touched it and they were like, see, she's not, it's not painful. Like she didn't flinch or anything. And I was like, oh, I didn't think you could do that. Um, but she's okay. She's just crying out of confusion and you know, it's understandable. But I've tried to like, I'm like, do you want to sit on my lap? I'll sit with you. And she doesn't want to know me. She, uh, she keeps running away. So I'm just going to leave her to it. As much as it pains me, I've got to listen to her from the other room, like crying a little heart out. And it's where they have the like tube down their throat during surgery. She's got that like husky, like windpipe. Oh, it's just so sad. I like this. I didn't film this morning. Cause to be honest, I was just, I wasn't like, I'm worried about the surgery because I knew it was going to be fine, like it's a routine thing, but like I just was a little bit um, just emotional I guess because you know she was like, she, I put a collar on and a lead and she was like running to the door like she thought we were going on a walk and then you know I put her in the car and she like usually if we go in the car it means we're going on a good walk because we're like driving to somewhere you know special and no, we were driving to the vet and then she wouldn't go in and like when we were waiting outside like the woman was talking me through and I was like signing stuff and like we have to wait outside at the moment because of covid like you can't go in with them which is even sadder but um like this like the vet's here and I'm talking to the woman and Evie was just sat on the floor like this like and she wouldn't even look at the vet she was like just staring at the road like <laughs> so they had to carry her in she looked at me like what are you doing to me and I was like I'm so sorry but yeah, I mean, she's actually gone silent now. I think it might be because I'm talking. Maybe she just... They said, like, she just was crying the whole time, like, while she was by herself, like, in the little... What do they call them? The little crate things they put them in. So she's been sat on people's laps all day. Which sounds like... That sounds about right, to be honest. She's a Havanese. She wouldn't even take a treat off me. This dog will do anything for a treat. I offered it to her. She turned her nose up, so... I was like, that's when you know things ain't right. Hey, she's got a little pink suit on as well. I was like, I was hoping she was gonna get a suit and not a cone because I think the cones are just seem really irritating. So she's in a little suit, but I wasn't prepared for the crying. I knew she was gonna be like groggy and out of it, you know, and confused and probably wanted to be by herself, but I didn't expect these noises. It's just really hard to like ignore. I just hope she eventually, like we've been back like 45 minutes. She's still crying. I hope she eventually is just going to fall asleep. Leave. Leave. You say hi. Should I leave you alone? Oh, she won't even look at me now. We want to see your little pink suit. No, not today. Oh, gosh. I'll show you when she's in a better mood. She's like trotting about fine, so it's not like she can't like move or anything, but um, I'll show you when she's better, but yeah. I think I'm flushed out of like, I don't know, I've I've said before, I've got the skin tone that just flushes, the, the littlest, well this isn't a little thing, but you know. I just get flushed when I'm a bit flustered, so please excuse me, but um, she'll be fine. It's going to be fine. And it's only it ever has to happen once in your life, Eve. You'll never have to do it again, and on the plus side, you won't have to wear nappies again. Well, like, hopefully. Maybe one day if you're, like, incontinent. But, like, for a long time, hopefully. You'll never have to wear nappies. And you'll never have to bleed. And be kept on a lead all the time. I mean, you're going to have to be kept on a lead for, like, the next two weeks. But, after that, the good times will be rolling. Hey? Sound good?
There we go. I mean, no cries. That sounds like you approve. Anyway, yeah, so I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Oh, and also, I didn't realise, well, like, this took me by surprise, but during, they rung me during the surgery, and I was like, oh my god, what has happened? They were like, it's unlikely we'll have to ring you, but we, we might have to, so just in case. And I saw the vet number flash up, I was like, oh my god, because I knew she'd, like, I dropped her off at, like, half eight this morning, but the spay wasn't actually until, like, I think she was going in at ten, and they phoned me at eleven, and I was like, oh my god. Or I was like, are they just phoning me to say it's gone well? But they were like, oh yeah, um, she's just in now. And they were like, she's absolutely fine, don't worry. And I was like, oh my god. And they were like, oh yeah, we found, um, she's got a hernia. And I was like, what? Like, how would I have not known that? But it was an umbilical one, so like where the umbilical cord was. It just obviously hadn't closed properly um, after she was born. So it's quite common. And they were like, yeah, it's fine, we'll just fix it now. Um, I did have to pay extra for it. But, you know, of course I wasn't going to be like, no, leave it. So they said her incision's like a bit bigger than it would be if it was just your normal space. So that's unfortunate. But it looked absolutely, like they showed me, it honestly looked absolutely fine. It's just a line along her stomach. Hey, what did you do in the pink suit? Oh, what did I do to you? Hey? How much do you hate me on a scale of one to hiding under a sofa? <laughs> Oh no, okay, I'll stop talking to you, I'm sorry. We are friends again. <laughs> There's no one at the door, Eve, I'm just filming. Every time I get up from my chair without fail, she stands up as if someone's at the door. Um, hello everyone, it is Thursday. Oh gosh, um, it's uh Thursday, yes it is. And we are eight days post spay for Lil Eves. Where can I put you? Ugh. One second. He's a good girl. Here she is, the little patient. I've just got some dentist sticks out for her. That's why she's looking very enthusiastically at them. Hello. How are we doing, Lil Eves? You feeling so much better? No more of that shrieking? Mm -hmm. Oh! Eves, you come to say hello! I um, just thought I would do a little... Actually, I've just decided to film today because, like, why not? <laughs> I can't get my words together. I, look, I don't look the greatest. I just had a little cry, I'm not going to lie to you. I just thought I would firstly say about Evie's stay. Um, yes, yeah, so it's eight days post spay now and she's absolutely fine i'm just now battling to stop her running and jumping on everything um she has like it's been a bit unavoidable there's been a couple of times she has run while we've been out she's been on the lead but like i've had her on the extended lead just you know to give her some range of movement and um she's like seen dogs she knows or whatever and like sprinted up to them so I mean you can't stop them doing everything but on the whole like we've blocked off like the sofa so she can't jump on them and just keeping an eye on her but in all honesty like she's it's healed really well like the incision now I can show you I don't know if you want a warning here because some people don't like looking at this stuff but in all honesty it just looks like a little pink line I didn't show you on the day but if you remember she was like well you will remember because you would have seen it a few minutes ago but she was like shrieking crying and that like carried on for most of that day she came back thankfully by the night time it stopped and she slept through to like five in the morning um she didn't want to eat anything which i expected but she also wouldn't drink which was what was concerning me because she didn't have any water that whole day but when she woke up at five the next morning she was like straight away she wanted water so she, i think that's what woke her up was the thirst but I mean, you can't, for, you know, I was try you can't force water down them. I was dipping, like, my finger in water and rubbing it on her lips the night before just to try and get her to, like, have some sort of liquid. But, um, thankfully, at least the next morning, she then drank a lot. Um, went back to eating and everything. So, she literally, the next day, was back to normal. A little, maybe a little bit more tired than normal. Still had a bit of the shakes from the anaesthetic. But she was straight away, like, back with full energy. And I was like, no, please don't jump on stuff. And everything, Eve. Can I just here she is? Can I just show you a little? Oh God! I just slid my booty on the floor. Here is. Oh, ready? Can you see that little line? Sorry, that's really inappropriate. Let's hold it down a bit. There's a little line. 
um that's her little scar is it gonna be i don't know if it will scar or not to be honest i know her fur will grow over it anyway but that's what it looks like eight days on i think it looks really good and i i thought like weirdly i know mostly take like normally the vet asks for you to like bring them in for a checkup but they just asked me to send a picture i don't know if that's like because of covid they're trying to reduce contact or if like that's how they do it but i just had to send her a picture of her scar or the wound um like five days after surgery and they were like yeah, it looks really good and that was it and obviously the suit's off um really we had to take the suit off earlier than i liked because just because it's hot it would be too hot for her to have the suit on this week um but to be honest she hasn't really been licking it anyway like she the couple of times we took it off when she first been spayed she went straight to it um because obviously it was fresh but i only took it off to walk her so she like didn't i literally would take it off put her collar on and get out the door before she had a chance to properly like lick it so she hasn't really touched it so thankfully it's all good there is a little bump at like the base of it but i've i've googled it and i think it's the stitches i don't think it's anything else yeah but obviously i'll keep an eye on it if that doesn't go within like a few weeks i will tell the vet but i think it's fine but yeah so that's an update on evie's spay yeah she's doing really well aren't you are you gonna oh look now she's rolled over you're gonna have a belly rubs obviously belly rubs have been up here while, while this is healing here's a bit of you can you oh as soon as i show it can i see your belly ready bellies <gasps> belly there we go it's just like it actually looks redder on camera than it is it's just now like a very pink line like that the camera makes it look red but it's actually not which is weird yes would you like a chew want a dentist stick you don't know what that means do you oh yeah oh she does know can you sit then good girl oh very good you can have one then come here okay sit good girl there you go she's off off to her bed oh actually one of the only things that she has been doing since the surgery she is very content now they're nice <laughs> she keeps waking up like really early like 2 a.m 4 a.m 6 a.m sometimes she needs to go to the toilet sometimes she just wakes up and wants attention it's really hard because like i would ignore it if i knew it was just attention but sometimes she does actually want to go to the toilet i don't know if it's a combo i don't know if it's because it's hot if it's because she's in a bit of discomfort if it's because she's not getting as long a walk as she normally would while she's recovering so she's got more energy i don't know what it is but she just keeps waking up in the night which she hasn't done since like the first two weeks I got her, so something great. But I'm hoping it's just a phase. And once she's back to like proper walks, like off the lead, running around two walks a day, she'll be more worn out. And then, and obviously it, like once this heat goes, it's meant to cool down from tomorrow. I'm hoping that means she'll be okay. But I actually go away on Saturday without her. Oh, so I'm not really gonna see her like as she comes like her routine goes a bit more back to normal, but hopefully for my mum's sake, she sorts it out, the sleeping. Um, but anyway, yeah, so that's where we're at with the space. So it's been all good. I'm trying to teach Evie to, cause I was like, well, it's like, she can do quite a few basic tricks. So I'm like, I need to up it now. You know, she's one year, she's one year old. She's advancing in life. Like she should know more tricks. I'm trying to teach her just to stand. It's actually quite a hard one to teach. I want to teach her to stand, like on command, like say she's lying down. To be honest, the only time that's ever going to be useful is like maybe, maybe if she was at the vet and wouldn't stand or something, I don't know. But I don't know, just something to teach, isn't it? And then I want to teach her to bow. Cause she always stretches in like the bow position and then like speaking of, and then she holds it for ages. And like, but I never have a treat on me cause I think the easiest way to teach it is to say bow when she doesn't give her the treat. So it looks really hard to just teach them to do it unless I'm just not advanced enough. Ready? Can you sit? Oh. <laughs> oh, you can't see you. Hold on, come on. <laughs> Hang on. Ready? So sit. Good girl. And then stand. 
Oh, oh, no. Stand. Good girl, stand. Very good. And down. Good girl. And come here. And sit. Good girl. And stand. Stand. No. Stand. Oh, that was you. Oh, bless you. Right, again. Sit. Stand. Stand. Oh, no. Stand. Good girl, stand. It's just trying to catch her standing, really. <laughs> Sit. Now stand. No. <laughs> stand. Stand. Good girl, stand. Spin. Good girl. Stand. No. Stand. Good girl, stand. Good girl. Stand. Stand. Good girl, stand. And down. Good girl. Sit. And stand. No. Stand. Stand, good girl. Spin. Good girl. Sit. And stand. Good girl. You got it. And sit. Good girl. Stand. Stand. Good girl. She's getting there. She's getting it. Alright, you need to get ready to go now, Eves. Which means I'm leaving you home alone. She's actually, I don't know if I've updated on this, because I think I filmed something like a few months ago. Also, I've got um, Shrek 2 on and the fan. Um, yeah, Evie actually loves Shrek 2. She fully like watches it, I think, because of all the animals. Um, yeah, I think I filmed where I was like starting to like, when I was sitting on the doorstep to like test her home loan. I've got a fake tan on and she's looking off my legs. Well, We've had success. We've left her for two hours home alone since. We've done like half an hour, an hour, and then two hours, and she's been absolutely fine. Like, I've waited outside to see if she whines or anything, and she hasn't. I mean, obviously, I don't know what she's doing when we're not here. That might be because she knows I'm, like, waiting outside. I am, like, tempted to get one of those cameras, like the Furbo, but at the same time, I guarantee you, Evie probably just lies on the doormat when we go, and it'd be really hard, like, if I put the camera in the hallway, it's be, I don't know, it'd just be hard to, like, find her, and we don't really have a room we can gate her off in, because, well, it could be the kitchen, I don't know, like, to be honest, I just find her quite trustworthy to roam around the downstairs, the upstairs is gated off, but, anyway, so I just don't think it's going to work to have a camera on her, but... She does really well anyway. I feel like I just saw a wasp. And that really stresses me out. Okay. Anyway. So yeah, she's actually got... She's done fine at being left home alone. And she's never, like, shown any signs of stress when we've come in. She doesn't, like, go super excited. And she doesn't... There's never any signs of, like, we anywhere. Or, like, um... Just any signs of stress. So she's, I think she's fine. I think she knows we're going to come back. And I, I do think that's her... I think that's uh I think it's okay. It's gonna leave Sam to the oh okay. She's gone oh there's another okay. Um yeah I think it's testament to her being left in the crate at night. Um which has done her the world of good. So success.